As I sort of narrowed down the talk, and I'm going to be talking about IL-17 producing neutrophils and how they have this anti, um, I'm sorry, how they have this enhanced antifungal activity during fungal keratitis. Um, a little bit of background, IL-17 is a 155 amino acid protein known as a pro-inflammatory cytokine that has been linked to many immune and autoimmune diseases, such as rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, and asthma. IL-17 itself is a very potent mediator of delayed type reactions to extracellular pathogens by increasing chemokine production by various tissues that have IL-17 receptors. This then causes the recruitment of effector immune cells to the site of infection, which in turn then induces the destruction of the pathogen's cellular matrix. Uh, what we wanted to look at is what is the role of IL-17 during fungal keratitis? Um, the interest for IL-17 and fungal keratitis in the Perlman lab came about uh, through his collaborative studies with uh, the Aravind Eye Hospital in India, where fungal keratitis is quite prevalent. Uh, what they found in the corneal stra uh, scrapings of patients with fungal keratitis was that majority of the cells that were found in these corneal scrapings were neutrophils. They also looked at um, corneas from post-transplant patients and also found that there was a substantial amount of neutrophils infiltrating in the infected corneas. They then um, looked at cytokines by uh, qPCR and they found that the predominant cytokine that was being produced in these corneal scrapings uh, were IL-17. So they wanted to, uh, so we decided to look at what the role of IL-17 was in this disease. Um, a murine model was designed whereas mice were uh, immunized subcutaneously on day minus 10 and day minus 3 with heat killed spores of both Aspergillus fumigatus or Fusarium oxysporum, which are the major causes of fungal keratitis. Then on day zero, the corneal stromas were infected with live canidia of whatever species they were immunized with. And this model, to um, to decipher what the role of IL-17 was in the infections, we already knew that when you immunize mice and you induce uh, presensitization to the fungus, which normally occurs in pe people who are inhaling spores continuously, there's a protective immune response where the uh, fungus, uh, which is analyzed by colony forming units, decreases in immunized mice. So to to see what the role was for IL-17, we first neutralized IL-17 in the cornea by injecting anti-IL-17 in the subconjunctiva three hours prior to infection. We also used an isotype control, which is basically the immunized mice with the protective response. 24 hours after infection, the eyes were excised, homogenized, and uh, colony forming units were analyzed. And as you can see, when IL-17 is neutralized in the cornea, um, the protective immune response is, is depleted and there is no longer uh, fungal killing. We also looked at immunized mice in transgenic IL-17 knockouts, uh, which could not produce IL-17 at all, and we found this same phenomenon. Uh, to then identify what cells were producing the IL-17 in the corneas, um, we again immunized these mice, uh, then infected the cornea stromas, and excised the corneas 24 hours after infection, which is when we first saw IL-17 produced. By flow cytometry, um, we stained the cells uh, for NIMPAR-14, which is an antibody for an extracellular uh, marker for neutrophils, and then also intracellular for IL-17. And as you can see, in the immunized mice, approximately 50% of uh, the neutrophils that infiltrate into the cornea produce IL-17. This phenomenon is only seen when you're looking at the presensitized mice, which basically correlates to us nor uh, new normal immunocompetent humans. Uh, to confirm that the neutrophil was indeed what was um, eliciting the IL-17, we uh, again used an immunized model where 24 hours prior to infection, we ablated uh, all neutrophils from the sy system by injecting anti nimp R14 into the interperitoneal. 24 hours later, we infected the cornea stroma, um, and 24 hours after infection, we, we confirmed that indeed um, the neutrophils were depleted from the system. 
Um, in the lysates, uh, the protein lysates of the cornea, we found that by ELISA, um, in the isotype controls, which is the typical immunized mice, there's IL-17 production. However, when you neutralize out all of the antibodies from the system, you no longer have IL-17 being produced. When you do this, when you knock out IL-17 and the neutrophils, again, you deplete out the uh, host protective immunity, whereas the colony forming units do not decrease and the, f and the fungal load cannot be depleted. To finally confirm that indeed the, R the neutrophils were producing the IL-17, RNA was extracted from immunized and unimmunized uh, mice. Uh, we purified neutrophils from the cornea, the bone marrow, and the spleen, and then ran RT-PCR. Um, and this is uh, the fold change, the delta fold change of the CT score. And as you can see, um, in the immunized mice in uh, the cornea, bone marrow, and spleen, um, there is approximately an 80-fold increase of mRNA expression of IL-17. This was confirmed by um, agarose gel, and RNA concentrations were also confirmed. So indeed, we showed that the uh, neutrophil is producing the IL-17, which is sort of a unique situation. To um, some of the other things that we found, which I'm really not going to go into, was um, things that had not yet been reported on IL-17 producing neutrophils was how exactly neutrophils were induced to produce IL-17 because normally this is a protein that's produced by T cells. And uh, what we did was we found out that actually recombinant IL-6 and IL-23 um, are necessary and sufficient to activate naive bone marrow derived neutrophils. And IL-6 and IL-23 actually initiate the translocation of ROR gamma T and the phosphorylation of STAT3, which um, then mediates the IL-17 production in the neutrophils. So uh, we did identify the mechanism as towards how IL-17 is produced by neutrophils. So of course, since this was a Murray model, we wanted to make sure that this um, actually is a phenomena that you can see in humans. So what we did here is we collected, collected purified neutrophils from the blood of healthy human donors. Uh, we confirmed uh, neutrophil purity um, by right gum sustaining, as it, you can see by the multi-lobe nucleus. It was a purified culture of about 99.3% of neutrophils. Uh, then we stimulated 50% of the population with recombinant IL-6 and IL-23. We analyzed the cells by flow cytometry, um, whereas they were intracellularly stained for IL-17. And as you can see, normal neutrophils do not produce IL-17. However, when they're stimulated with uh, IL-6 and IL-23, approximately 80% of the neutrophils then become IL-17 producing. Again, to confirm that this was true production and not uptake, uh, RNA was collected from these samples, and um, qPCR was run for um, the expression of, MR, of, of um, IL-17 mRNA. And as you can see, approximately uh, 70 to 100 percent of uh, fold increase in IL-17 expression in humans. So finally, uh, we knew that this was being produced. We knew what cell was producing it, so we wanted to, si to see what exactly the role of IL-17 was. And we did this by, we collected neutrophils from uh, black six mice or IL-17 knockout mice, which cannot produce neutrophils. We stimulated them with IL-23, and we confirmed that the C57 black six neutrophils, purified neutrophils, did indeed produce IL-17, and the IL-17 knockouts did not. We injected that, we infected CD18 knockout mice, which means that only the adoptive transfer cells would be able to migrate to the cornea. And we, um, we infected them with an RFP expressing fungus so that you could see the, um, the fungus at the site of the infection by microscopy. We then injected um, these neutrophils into the tail vein of the recipient mice. Uh, two hours after infection and 24 hours after infection examined uh, the mice. Uh, these are the eyes 24 hours after infection, and as you can see, if you do not have any neutrophils, there is a large fungal growth in the cornea. Uh, when there's no IL-17 being produced by the neutrophils, again, 
the fungal growth cannot be controlled. However, when you have IL-17 producing neutrophils, um, all the fungal growth is, is highly controlled. This was the RFP expression of this fungus was quantified by metamorph, and as you can see, there's a significant difference in fungal growth um, and enhanced fungal killing when the neutrophils are producing IL-17. Uh, we confirmed uh, by flow cytometry that these indeed were IL-17 producing neutrophils. We looked at the neutrophil number and saw that there was the same number of neutrophils infiltrating the cornea in both of these. It was just that these are producing IL-17. Lastly, to find how exactly we were enhancing fungal killing, we looked at reactive oxygen species, which is produced by neutrophils and affiliated with, um, associated with um, fungal killing. And indeed, when you have IL-17 being produced in the neutrophils, you can see that there is enhanced reactive oxygen species being produced, which is why you have enhanced fungal killing. So in conclusion, through our human and, and uh, murine model, what we found is that uh, in fungal keratitis, what happens is you have a fungal infection. Um, it is taken up by antigen-presenting cells, such as dendritic cells and macrophages. They are then induced to produce IL-6 and IL-23. We have identified that um, IL-6 and IL-23 receptors are constitutively expressed on neutrophils. They bind to these neutrophils, which then causes uh, STAT3 to be phosphorylated and WAR gamma T to translocate to the nucleus, which we also identified as being constitutively produced in neutrophils. When this occurs, when this translocation and phosphorylation occurs, it then induces the neutrophil to produce IL-17, and it also induces the neutrophil to then express the IL-17 RC receptor. There is an autocrine function, whereas the IL-17 feeds back onto the neutrophil, which then causes enhanced chemokine production, such as IL-8, and it also causes increased reactive oxygen species production. This all then correlates to enhanced fungal killing. So I would just like to acknowledge and thank Susan brady County for um, originally giving me the training grant and the VSRC, which is the reason, uh, the reason that I am here as a postdoc. I'd like to thank all the Perlman Lab, Masita, Steven, Angela, Yensan, the queen of eye infection, Sharat, who is continuing the studies in India, um, my uh, collaborating um, peers on my paper, Sixto Lial and Sunita Roy, our newcomers to the PM17 crew, Heather and Lynn, and of course my um, mentor, Eric. I would also really like to thank the VSRC Corps who have all helped me with um, this paper. You have really made it uh, quite easy to be a productive and efficient postdoc. And lastly, all of Eric's funding. Thank you. <laughs>